Rita lives in a very remote place, five hours away from the nearest birth centre. She has had all four antenatal checkups and plans to have her baby in a birthing centre. In Rita's ninth month of pregnancy, her labour pain suddenly starts. Her labour progresses very fast. The female community health volunteer realises they do not have enough time to reach the birthing centre and suggests that they should go to the home of Nima, a local nurse, where Rita can have her baby. Nima is the nurse who will help Rita give birth. Nima knows that lots of bleeding after birth is a real danger, so she firstly looks for signs that could show this may be a risk. She asks Rita if she has been having labour pains for more than eight hours after the active phase of labour began. Nima checks that Rita's cervix is not more than four centimetres dilated. If she has had more than four babies already, whether she has bled a lot during a previous pregnancy or birth. She also checks if Rita is anemic. Nima does a thorough examination of the mother and baby. Nima checks if Rita is expecting twins or if she has fibroids. Nima lays a plastic sheet under Rita so that the baby can be delivered on a clean surface. Nima prepares to assist Rita to have a normal vaginal birth. Once the baby has been delivered, Rita takes the three tablets of 200 micrograms of misoprostol. If Rita is expecting more than one baby, she should not take misoprostol until the second baby has been delivered. Misoprostol tablets reduce the risk of postpartum hemorrhage. They're supplied to pregnant women by the female community health volunteers during the eighth month of pregnancy with proper counselling. Nima helps Rita to breastfeed her newborn baby because it helps the uterus to contract, which assists delivery of the placenta and reduces the risk of bleeding. She then checks for vaginal, cervical, perineal and paraurethral tears. Everything appears normal. Nima checks that the edges of the membranes of the placenta are smooth and do not appear incomplete. She also checks that the cotyledons are all present and no placental tissue has remained inside the uterus. If the placenta is delivered incomplete, then there will be a high chance of heavy bleeding later. Once the placenta is delivered, Rita begins to bleed. The soft cotton cloth pad that Rita was wearing is soaked with blood. Nima does an external uterine massage to try to contract the uterus and gives Rita another pad. Rita bleeds a lot more. Nima encourages Rita to pass urine, drink plenty of water and continues the uterine massage. If two soft cotton cloth pads become soaked with blood within 30 minutes, it is a sign of postpartum hemorrhage and Rita is in danger. Nima must act quickly and calls for help to refer Rita to the nearest appropriate health facility. She provides information about Rita's condition to the patient and her family. Nima repeats the external uterine compression to try to reduce the blood flow. Nima checks Rita's blood pressure, pulse rate, respiration rate and temperature. Rita is showing symptoms of losing too much blood. Her heart rate is very fast, with a pulse rate of more than 110 beats per minute. Her systolic blood pressure is less than 90 millimetres of mercury. She's gasping for breath. She has become pale. She is sweating. Nima keeps Rita with her feet up and head down to try to reduce the flow of blood. Help arrives to take Rita to the nearest appropriate health facility where she will receive the care she needs to stabilize her condition. Rita and baby should be taken to the nearest health center as soon as possible for further treatment. 
Rita should be under medical observation for at least two hours to ensure she's out of danger. Nima has helped Rita to deliver her baby. She has given misoprostol to the mother. and identified heavy bleeding on time. Nima has referred Rita and baby to the appropriate health center for further treatment. She has done everything possible to manage postpartum hemorrhage and acted quickly to save her patient's life. <laughs>